So this is the second of two videos uh, explaining the difference between the OTS Aquacom uh, SSB 2010s and the Powercom 3000D. If you saw the last video, we're moving to these 3000Ds and the sequence to get the, um, the menu options and choices is a little different than the Aquacoms and also the charging is a little bit different so if you can see i'm just going to kind of set this camera here in the sb 2010s you charge it remember it's uh clockwise to loosen it charges through here that's how you charge it and this is the cable that we use to charge the SP2010. So you see the, the red light just went on. You tighten that up. Um, but just for the sake of this video, we're, we don't need to charge this one. If you look at the Powercom 3000, this does not charge where your transducer is. This charges where your whip is. That goes to your mask. So this screws off. And you can see here, it looks like it's seven, four, five, six, eight prongs on there. And uh, like I said, we, uh, from the last video, Chief Locke from Chicago um, gave us this. this, is what he did for his guys. He's, uh, they're gonna show us how to use them. They, they color coded. Uh, just to make it easier, a little bit more fireman proof. So that you can take this off there. So you see they put a little bit of yellow on there to line up. So you don't have to sit there and try to count um, where it's going. So this is the port that actually charges the PowerCon 3000. Um, the charger doesn't have it, but you can see on there, it's a little bit recessed right there. That lines up with the yellow. Uh, Chief lock stressed, make sure it's in. You can see the red light. This light is also recessed, whereas you got it kind of a um, protruding bulb here. So that means it's charging. Uh, but if you can see on the charger here, it's green. So this power com is charged up, ready to go. So we'll unplug that there. So that's just the basic charging. Since this is different than the SB2010 and you don't need the transducer out, uh, we will most likely be leaving these transducers um, on here. So the same thing, this is uh, counterclockwise, tightens and clockwise loosens. And again, these transducers plug and play can they work with either one so once you get it kind of set in it'll it'll sink in there and tighten it counterclockwise so the next thing we're going to look at is so i'm going to put the whip back on this is what would connect to your depending on your mask we use agas and like i said here here's our comms module from ots this is what's normally in our mask uh this is one from Chicago that they just uh, used to test and we we got one here that we're gonna put in service the same way so we can test uh, These systems, so I'm just gonna plug the whip back in and again like I said they color-coded Put a little yellow mark there, which is nice So, you, uh, so you're not trying to ramrod these things in So the yellow is linked up there And now you're tightening this up two hands for that there you go okay now the same the one one difference is that if this um, we were using this is for this goes on the straps that hold your uh, your tank on the back of the your BCD we use this to touch and complete the circuit so right now you can see I don't know if you can that light is red, so that is working. 
and I'm going to put in, and I'm going to attach our comms. And move this over a little bit. Same as the last one, just the two prong. Alright, so now we are set up in the mode where we can start doing our test. Now the difference, the problem with this is the sequence of, of um, the push to talk button right here is a little bit different uh, to control the setting choices on the PowerCon 3000 versus the, uh, the SSB. 2010 so we can kind of go through uh, to, to hear what the settings are the initial settings let me get these ear pieces over here you can push it five times and that'll tell you what you have so So if you heard that, uh, there's a there's one other option on the PowerCom 3000s that is not on the SP2010s, and that was the scrambler. So in the scrambler mode, if both PowerComs or all your um, have scrambler on, the, they they'll be able to talk. But any unit that doesn't have the scrambler, it's just going to come in inaudible, um, just gibberish. So that's a nice feature. I don't know. Like I said, we just ordered these so that we were just kind of doing a little test run with this. But we'll uh, test that out when we get them in the spring or um, possibly in the, in the pool before then. But uh, we're going to go through the sequence. So th the other big difference is when you're pushing the buttons and also with the power com. You can hear when I do this five times, it's a 12 to 15 second delay from when you get in the water. So when those points get wet, like right now we are you know, completing that circuit, when they get wet, it's gonna take 12 to 15 seconds for you to talk and transmit versus the SSB, which once you're in the water, um, you can automatically talk. So let's go again, um, you can hear your settings. So with the uh, 3000D, uh, in order to change your settings, when you uh, use your push to talk button, you have to push it three times, but on the third time, you have to hold it down for around one second. So we're gonna do one, two. Main menu, channel. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, channel three. So we change it to channel three. So now it sounds like we have to do the whole sequence again. So now we're on channel. So one, two. So before I change any of that, so receive is the volume that comes into your earpieces um, and side is the volume you're going to hear of your own voice in your earpieces. So you, you know, you might want to receive higher than what your own voice, because sometimes I know with the hardline comms, I might sound a lot louder and you, you got to touch someone up on shore with an MK7 to uh, like turn yourself down. But um, we'll, we'll mess around with that. We'll change the setting there. Um, we'll receive at high from what Chief Locke said. High was good. Um, 
There are the other options that they had on volume were low, medium, high, and extra high. Extra high is really loud. Um, that's for the receiving, but for the side, it's only low or high. So we're gonna go to receive high, side high. So we have side at high. So now we have right now squelch at, let's go see what our squelch is at. Let's set that at medium. And the last thing, I believe our setting was on push to talk, but we'll, we want to make sure it's transmitting push to talk and not um, box, which is basically just means uh, voice operator ex operated exchange. So that means you're just open mic. And the issue with that is that it might, um, if you're breathing heavy and working, it's it, and that open mic, you might not understand. So we'll change it, uh, the transmit to ensure it's push to talk. All right, so now last thing we want to do is five presses and that'll tell you what your um, what your settings are at. So we, we should be channel three. Um, we should also have our volume receive high, side high, squelch is at medium, transmit push to talk, and the scrambler should still be off. So let's see if we're where we need to be. So that worked, which was great. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of differences with the PowerCom and uh, the SB20, SSB 2010s. So if we are gonna, that's just something to think about if you're, if you're using the 2010s as backup and your 3000 goes out, you're gonna have to remember the sequences are different. So I think what I'm gonna do is make a, kind of a cheat sheet for both and hopefully um, we can get enough power comms and that, that we don't have this issue. But again, uh, we'll be going over this in our next drill and uh, I'll post this video to our uh, YouTube page so you guys can watch it before uh, we start this wireless training.